Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Usually, I would not make an entire main part of an episode about a fundraising announcement. However, nominally, that's what today's is. AI Google search engine competitor Perplexity is now officially a unicorn, and as I'll mention, might be raising at an even higher valuation already. We will cover all of the actual investment news, but what's interesting is also what the investment says about, one, the state of venture capital in AI right now, and two, the whole debate around proprietary technology versus quote-unquote rappers. Let's start with a very representative quote from T. Fallabilist on Twitter, which says, Google search is now annoyingly bad, and after tweaking my search habits a bit, perplexity is refreshingly good. And yes, even for serious tasks like finding key info for investment research. For those who aren't familiar, perplexity is, like I said, an AI-powered search engine. When you search on perplexity, it gives you what looks more like a dossier than Google's classic set of links. It provides an AI-curated answer that sums up what it found, but it also cites its sources. Not only does it link to its sources, it also explicitly ties them to the parts of its answer where they are relevant. So for example, when searching for the firewood that burns the longest, the first sentence of the answer is oak is the firewood that burns the longest, for which perplexity is pointing to three sources. There is also a side panel where you can search videos, and if you have a pro account, you can generate images. Now already this is a great interface, and something that people are really responding to. However, they also have the ability to ask follow-ups. For example, the related follow-ups that they suggest are things like how to properly season firewood. What's the difference between hardwood and softwood? Let's click that one. And as you add more of these searches, all of which are part of the same overall user experience, you're building a little knowledge base for yourself that then becomes saved as part of your library. Now, Perplexity has a bunch of other features for pros, including collections, which allow you to associate a bunch of searches together, which is particularly valuable for things like planning a family vacation, where you might have lots and lots of different types of searches. So that is perplexity in a nutshell. Many people have had this same experience of finding themselves just naturally shifting to perplexity and away from Google. Enough people have had that experience, in fact, that the company has just announced a raise of 62.7 million, led by Daniel Gross, but also including notables like Stanley Druckenmiller, who is a famous hedge funder and extremely influential investor on Wall Street, Nvidia, Jeff Bezos, Gary Tan from Y Combinator, Andre Karpathy, Naval Ravikant, and more. This is technically a Series B1 round, following on from a Series B in January. As part of their announcement, Perplexity said that they've grown to serve 169 million queries per month, hitting more than a billion over the last 15 months. They also announced that they're seeing increased demand from global telcos who want to bring AI to their mobile subscribers and from enterprises. They noted that they have partnerships now with SoftBank and Deutsche Telekom, which together will distribute Perplexity to a combined total of over 116 million users. And they announced Perplexity Enterprise Pro as their first B2B offering. Some of the customers include Databricks, NVIDIA, Zoom, Cleveland Cavaliers, Latham & Watkins, Universal McCann, Paytm, Vercel, and more. Bloomberg had the exclusive on the announcement and comes to a fairly obvious conclusion. Perplexity's valuation has doubled in three months in a clear sign of investor enthusiasm. So what additional information did we get from this Bloomberg announcement? The biggest thing was probably that the company has been growing fast, not just in terms of use, but also in terms of revenue. I think previous numbers that they had shared suggested that they were making something like $3 million, but now they're up to $20 million in annual recurring revenue. Part of that, it seems, comes from the company's new enterprise efforts. So alongside the announcement, Perplexity announced Enterprise Pro. And so what does that actually mean? How are companies using this? Well, luckily, they gave a lot of examples. And by the way, for any AI startups out there, being clear about how others are using your product can be very, very valuable. So for example, in this announcement, they list that product teams at Zoom are using it for targeted search. HP Salesforce is using it for in-depth prospect research. Data teams at the Cleveland Cavs are researching ticket sale trends as well as doing partnership prospecting and other things like that. The CEO of Databricks estimated that Perplexity was helping their team save around 5,000 working hours monthly. Additionally, they announced that they were looking to expand their user base to other places outside of America. To do so, they touted new partnerships with Japan's SoftBank and Germany's Deutsche Telekom, which combined have more than 300 million users worldwide, and which Perplexity suggests will help them reach 113 million new users. So I said that I wanted to talk about what the implications were for the state of AI, specifically AI hype. And there are two dimensions of that that I want to address. The first has to do with the idea of AI wrapper companies. There has long been a sense that if you weren't building your own model, you were going to have a hard time defending your business. A lot of the discussion in the second half of last year was about that. A number of the companies that were struggling with layoffs were companies who had just basically tried to wrap ChatGPT and package it for a specific audience and who were finding that kind of difficult. Perplexity shows, however, that pursuing a very specific product, in their case, of course, search, might lead to some different dynamics. 
Now, I don't want to minimize the technology that Perplexity has built themselves to do the summarization associated with sources, etc., but they are not building their own models. They are pulling from existing models, and in fact, you can go to Perplexity Labs and test out different models against each other. Point being, though, that this is a product company, not a model company, and yet they're getting a lot of traction. In other words, as we see models themselves get more commoditized than they are now, will the emphasis shift back towards product companies that actually find product market fit around a specific use of AI? Might we see a complete inversion of that idea that it's all about the model underneath to instead it all being about the product that sits on top? I'm not sure, and it's very likely that it's not that dramatic a switch, but it's something really interesting to consider. Second, in terms of what it says about hype from a fundraising perspective, it's also pretty hard to say. On the one hand, this is a company who raised just a few months ago and now are raising at double the valuation, which seems pretty hypey. But then again, the company is clearly growing. And in fact, one could argue that the economics of this most recent investment look a little bit better from a forward revenue perspective than did the last investment. And the most interesting part of this, however, is that TechCrunch is reporting that in addition to this raise, which was just confirmed, the company is out again raising another $250 million or more at a $2.5 to $3 billion valuation. TechCrunch writes, we understand from multiple sources close to the company that Perplexity is raising a further round. NEA and IVP, both previous backers of the company, are among those looking to invest in this larger round, according to sources. A partner from an existing investor said they are growing very rapidly. Yes, we are looking to participate. Now, when it comes to why jump on this now, I actually think that TechCrunch sums it up really nicely. They say Perplexity's reason for raising again so soon? Yes, perhaps to capitalize on customer and investor interest at what one investor described as a zeitgeist moment for the startup, but also because of the mechanics of building any kind of AI service right now. Said that investor, compute is very expensive, so they may need to raise for that reason alone. In other words, while Perplexity may be having a moment and leveraging that moment to move a little bit faster on fundraising than they might otherwise have, it can't be far from their minds just how expensive it is to compete in this AI space. In that environment, you kind of want to take the money when you can get it. So like I said, I think this is a really interesting story, not just from Perplexity's point of view, but also from what it says about other trends in the AI space. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.